The Seminoles of Florida, one of the 573 Native American tribes and the leaders of the largest Native American gaming empire the world has ever seen. With more than 2,000 Seminoles still living in Hollywood, Big Cypress, Brighton, Immokalee, Fort Pierce, and Tampa, they have survived unmeasurable tragedy and have, against all odds, triumphed as a tribe. However, to understand the history of the Seminoles, you have to go back, hundreds of years back. Seminole history begins with a band of just 300 Creek Indians from Georgia and Alabama who migrated to the former territory of the Apalachee in Spanish Florida. It was at this time that the people began to be referred to as the Seminoles. The name Seminole means wild people or runaway and was created because the Seminoles were not just leaving the Creek tribe, they were escaping. The Seminoles were known as Lower Creeks and moved to get away from the dominance of Upper Creeks. Some were searching for freedom, some for riches, and some for new fields to plant corn, beans, and other crops. For a while, Spain even encouraged these migrations to help provide a buffer between Florida and the British colonies. Over this time, the Seminoles spread their very own culture, food, traditions, and beliefs. While the Seminoles migrated to Florida, their culture evolved. Early Seminoles lived in houses called chiquis, built by weaving palmetto leaves together with vine or rope and placing it over a cypress log frame. The chiqui was created during the early 1800s, when Seminole Indians needed fast, disposable shelter during the Seminole Wars. Seminole traditional foods include safki, a drink consisting of rice and corn, fry bread, boiled swamp cabbage, and more. The Seminoles even have their own language, Mikasuki. Mikasuki is an unwritten language that has only been passed down orally. Words like shinabish or chientamo are commonly used to thank and greet fellow Seminoles. Although, one of the most important aspects of Seminole culture will always be clothing. Clothing has and will always be hand-sewn and includes very intricate patterns. Women usually wear long skirts covered with colorful patchwork with a matching cape. Men would usually wear embellished jackets with trousers. The clothing material was mostly cotton, obtained from trading posts. Tribal members also wore hand-beaded jewelry, like necklaces, which took hours or even days to make depending on the size. Today, Seminole culture is still prominent and has a very large impact on the current generation. As the tribe started to grow, they took in many slaves that managed to escape from surrounding states. Andrew Jackson, a powerful military general at the time, sent the U.S. military to invade Seminole villages. The invasion of Seminole land led to the First Seminole War in 1817, and eventually led to the adams onish Treaty in 1819. The First Seminole War only lasted a year, but the adams onish Treaty largely affected the Seminoles. The treaty between Spain and the United States ceded Florida to the U.S. and defined the U.S. and New Spain boundaries. Due to the treaty, Seminole territory was under full U.S. control by 1821. The states urged the natives to leave Florida and relocate to the territory west of the Mississippi, which is now known as Oklahoma. But even with their territory under control, the Seminoles refused to leave. The refusal to leave Florida led to many minor disputes and eventually to the Second Seminole War. Because of the Indian Removal Act created by Jackson five years prior, the Americans sought to remove the Seminoles from Florida. But thanks to Chief Osceola's leadership, the tribe was able to fight against the Americans using guerrilla war tactics. The Seminoles hid in cypress trees and sawgrass while combating American soldiers with arrows and guns. 1,600 Americans were killed and the war ended up costing the United States government around $60 million. Unfortunately, what is not talked about is the effects the wars had on the Seminole tribe. Before the war ended, Chief Osceola was captured and later died of malaria. With over 3,000 Seminoles killed in war, the tribe was a skeleton of what it once was. As the Seminoles started to lift themselves from the ashes of the Second Seminole War, in 1855, yet another war broke out with the United States. The Third Seminole War consisted of battles over land, and now, the United States did not just want to move the Seminoles, they wanted to completely get rid of them. The war ended in 1858, and the Americans' efforts to extinguish the flame of the Seminole tribe almost succeeded. However, a little spark of the tribe still burned on. A small band of Seminoles stayed hidden in the Big Cypress Swamp, and nearly all of the Seminoles who live in Florida today are descendants of this band. With only these few hundred Seminoles remaining, it is clear to see the tragedy the tribe endured. 
but that is not how we know the Seminoles today. To understand how they became the frontrunners of one of the largest gaming empires, you have to understand one case, the Seminole tribe of Florida v. Butterworth. In 1976, the Seminole tribe decided to expand its economic base by entering the cigarette business, but the idea was contested by a local vendor and the state. Instead of selling cigarettes, the tribe decided they needed to try something different. The tribe then decided to diversify its economic base even more by going into bingo and saw an opportunity to run high stakes bingo on its lands. And at that time, the state of Florida had what we would call a charitable bingo statute, which basically allowed nonprofit organizations, veterans organizations to run charitable bingo nights. Uh, and what that meant is under the statute, they could run a bingo game one night a week and offer a prize per game of up to you know, $100. And the tribe thought, well, that's fine. Well, if the state can allow those folks to do it, we should be able to do it too. But we would like to run high stakes bingo. And finally, in 1979, the bingo hall opened, uh, running games several nights a week with prizes running from, I believe, 250 up to $10,000. We're also offering prizes like cars and trips, things of that nature, to attract people onto the reservation and, and come play these games. Well, at that time, the sheriff of Broward County, Bob Butterworth, objected. He didn't like the idea. And he claimed, first of all, the tribe was violating the state statute on travel bingo games, number one. And two, he claimed that the tribe's partner, the manager, was involved in organized crime. Even without evidence, Butterworth went into court and attempted to stop the tribe from running bingo games. The trial court didn't agree. However, they proposed that Broward County deputies observe a seminal bingo game. And of course, the tribe wasn't comfortable with that position, and it went into court to stop the sheriff from doing anything as far as its bingo game. And it convinced the trial court that in fact it was entitled to run a high stakes bingo. And I guess the question is, well, how, how could that be? And the answer is based upon federal law. So back in 1953, the United States Congress decided to enact what we call Public Law 280. Sheriff Butterworth went into court to stop the tribe, arguing that uh, the state charitable bingo law applied to the tribe, and that it was, it was a criminal law and completely prohibited anyone from running a profitable bingo game. And the trial court and then the appellate court in Atlanta both agreed that that wasn't the case at all. That in fact the state charitable bingo law was a civil regulatory law, and therefore because the state policy was not to prohibit travel bingo games or prohibited bingo games, but was to allow it, but regulated, that therefore the tribe was free to run its own high stake bingo games and was immune from the state law. Now, the Seminoles own hotels, casinos, concert venues, and cafes in over 60 countries. With the grand opening of the new Hard Rock Hotel in New Jersey and the brand new Guitar Hotel being built in Hollywood, the Seminole tribe is still expanding and is proving that the obstacles they once faced are not going to stop them. Throughout history, the Seminoles suffered unmeasurable tragedies during the Seminole Wars and more, but they fortunately persevered, leading these unconquered people to create the largest gaming empire the world has ever seen.